That is my office right there, second floor on the corner. I'm in Adelaide, but just three days ago I was in Vietnam and just before that in Laos and Cambodia. I did record an opening piece to camera there, but it was so boring it even put me to sleep. So welcome to the second edition of The Business Trip, the Indochina version. Join me as I spend about five days traveling through Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos uh, in my role for uh, Bunnik Tours. That's them, just over there. Let's go. This video gives you a bit of an idea of what I do on my travels and why I travel as much as I do. We pick up the video on the morning of day four of this trip. I had just spent three days in Saigon at a travel conference and conducting training for our tour guides and now it was time to head to Cambodia. So today's ride is on Angkor Air, who I've never flown before, it's a new one for me. I'm in economy class. Um, it's on an A320-200. This one dates back to uh, November 2016, so it's a, it's a very new aircraft. Uh, don't want to spoil anything for you, but uh, I have a suspicion that the uh, economy class cabin is going to be laid out in a 3x3 three three configuration, which means couples travelling together, one of you will have a middle seat. Let's fly. I really love a remote gate, uh, especially when it's not raining. You get to see how big these things are. This is only a small one. It's uh, really cool. I was right, economy class was laid out in a 3x3 configuration. Being the low season, this flight was almost empty, so we all got to travel in plenty of comfort. Angkor Air is the national carrier of Cambodia and would have to be one of the smallest national carriers around, with just six aircraft and only a handful of destinations. That said, it was a very nice experience for a quick and comfortable hop over to Siem Reap. I've had my initial meeting with the uh, manager of our agent here. It's a uh, late Sunday afternoon and I've got the rest of the day off. So uh, I reckon first stop, it's got to be right there. You can over there because you're in there. One thing that uh, I do need to get better at is uh, taking some time out and relaxing during these work trips. So uh, I think this will be a very good start. One of the advantages of the uh, type of travel I do for work is that I get to see some fantastic things around the world. Angkor Wat being a great example here in uh, Siem Reap of Cambodia. Although I won't have time for that this time. One of the disadvantages, I suppose, is uh, that uh, you find yourself wandering these uh, places and, and here I'm in the centre of Siem Reap and around me there are tourists uh, all enjoying themselves, families out and stuff and uh, you're wandering around here by yourself and uh, you think, oh, wish my family was here and uh, I was sharing it with, uh, with somebody. So that is, uh, I suppose, one of the occupational hazards of uh, all business travellers who uh, tend to uh, spend a lot of their time travelling alone and therefore eating alone, in, uh, sometimes in uh, some really cool tourist places.
Good morning. It's another morning and uh, it's straight back into work today. I've got some uh, tour guide training sessions, but first, time for a spot of breakfast and a uh, coffee, of course. And that's a training done here in CM Reap. It's a, yeah, it's a wrap. This team here, absolutely brilliant. These are the guys that uh, bring this place to life. So uh, definitely well worth a visit. Come to Cambodia, come and see Angkor Wat, but then also come and see the rest of the country. Thanks, guys. See you in Cambodia. I really love these training sessions with tour guides and meeting the local team. I think it's such an important part of my job. Um, what it does, it helps to establish the culture within the organisation and, and being one of the owners, I think that's one of my bigger responsibilities. Um, to explain the reasons why we do what we do. Why did we start this company in the first place and what are our major principles and, and philosophies going forward? Um, it's important that everybody in, uh, throughout the organisation understands that um, and the people that are on the ground are often quite removed from what happens in the office and likewise what happens in the office people are a bit removed from what happens on the ground so these sessions are a great way for uh, for me and and for our team in Australia to learn more and there's my phone because work never stops we'll be back in a sec back again so uh, in addition to explaining the why we do what we do and the company history and, and an update um, I also cover a lot of um, cultural information what is it that makes Aussies tick? Why do we travel where we do and how we travel? Um, and how that differs from, say, other markets like the UK, Europe, and uh, Americans, North Americans, how they travel. And then finally, we have a big section on uh, crisis management. What happens when things go wrong? Hopefully, we, uh, we don't have the situation where things go wrong, but, you know, in this world, anything can happen from a medical emergency to a traffic accident or, uh, or something big. And it's how you prepare for those things which is uh, really, really important. Overall, a really, really good session. I'll be doing, uh, the next one is in uh, Luang Prabang in Laos in a uh, couple of days time. I fly to, uh, to Laos tomorrow. The rest of today will be spent here in the hotel room working, uh, getting the emails done and uh, yeah, so forth. So let's get stuck into it. Let's get to the airport. Another brand new airline for me today, Bangkok Airways. Never flown them before. Flying from here to Bangkok and then on to Luang Prabang. This time of year is low season, so there's no direct flights between uh, Siem Reap and Luang Prabang. Um, so far, so good though. The lovely lady at uh, check-in gave me a sticker and a little voucher for uh, a lounge. So I'll uh, go and uh, check that. I am flying economy class. It's in an ATR-72. Um, so I uh, don't get to fly one of those very often either, so uh, let's see how it goes. This is very nice. Better some of the uh, lounges I've been in when I've been flying business class. So this looks like it is the business class lounge, so uh, yeah, very nice. Well done back, okay. Like Time to fly, thank you very much. Uh, Bye -bye. tight connection so we've uh, got an escort. I'm at the gate. This would have to be the shortest uh, visit to Thailand ever, although I'm technically not in the country. 
last time I was here at Bangkok Airport, I flew out on uh, the iconic 747. It was with uh, Thai Airways in their Royal First Class through to uh, Sydney. Uh, a really, really great experience here at the airport and in the air. Uh, the link is in the description below. You can find it on my channel. It's uh, definitely worth checking out. Around about six o'clock is uh, chanting hour, and here in Luang Prabang, there's a uh, temple on uh, pretty much every street. It's really nice just to uh, stand outside and listen to the chants coming in from the uh, from the monks. First night in Luang Prabang and uh, I've got to eat the local food. And with me, I've got a local, Pierre. Well, he's lived here for uh, 12, 15 years, so uh, he's about as local as we can get. So uh, he's going to show us how to, uh, how to eat this stuff. You grab the sticky rice, make one bowl with your hand. This is what we call lak, local mint salad. How is it? Tasty. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. And what's what's this one? Is this a soup? A soup made with um, fish eggs. That's why you get the color, the pink color. Fantastic. And here you go. Oh. Banana leaves and steamed, steamed fish. fish. Inside the banana leaves. Oh, yum. Be straight from the Mekong, which is just over my uh, right shoulder. Now, as far as business travellers go, I uh, know I'm very, very lucky, whereas most business travellers uh, get to see lots of meeting rooms, lots of airports and uh, potentially production facilities on the outskirts of town. Uh, I'm in part of the, uh, I'm in the tourism industry and uh, in that respect, I'm, I'm very, very lucky. So on this business trip, on this day, I find myself in Luang Prabang and uh, my job today is to uh, experience some of the sights and sounds here in, uh, in this beautiful city. Um, that will involve testing uh, some new product that we're going to potentially put into tours, as well as uh, going through some of the existing tourism, uh, some of the existing stuff that we've got in our tours. Uh, join me and uh, I'll show you a bit of the one for fun. My first stop was the local market. If given the choice between a tourist market and a local market, I'll always go local. There's just so much more to see. So behind me is the, uh, the old royal palace when uh, Lao was a kingdom. The, um, when communists took over, obviously the kingdom disappeared. It's now the National Museum. Uh, I'm not going to go in. Um, time constraints mean that I can't go into the museum. However, I will be climbing a mountain up here to get some uh, great views. So uh, let's go and do that instead. One thing to bear in mind in all of this travel is uh, whilst I do get to these fantastic sites, I am travelling at about three times the pace of a normal tourist. Um, so uh, I churn through a lot of sites in a very quick amount of time. That's why I actually like travelling with clients because I get to uh, see it at their pace, uh, which is nice sometimes too. The views from the top were stunning. 
from here, we picked up the pace and the rest of the day saw me get lessons on how to be a monk, visit the largest temple in town to put those lessons into practice, check out the bamboo bridge, get out into the countryside and visit a rice farm, and see the beautiful Guangxi waterfalls. Luang Prabang is an incredibly beautiful place and well worth visiting. The link to my full travel video on Luang Prabang can be found in the description below. It's just gone 5.30 in the morning, just waking up. It's a little bit tired, but I learned yesterday that the monks have been up since three. They, uh, they've already had various prayer sessions and meditation, and uh, very shortly they'll be coming out of the uh, of the temples with their bowls to uh, collect some food and arms from the uh, from the local population. It's one of the traditions here in Luang Prabang. I'm going to go and have a look. That experience with the monks this morning was really special. I really enjoyed that. You know something's a living tradition when it happens in the back streets away from the tourists. So if you do come here, please um, respect that tradition. Ask before you take photos and, and videos and, and take a step back. Uh, don't be in, the, in their face. Um, really nice experience. Today, another very busy day. Um, I've got tour guide training here this morning. After the training and lunch, our team suggested we try a local tradition. Now there's a bit of French influence in this part of the world and uh, one of those influences has turned into a bit of a national sport which is baton. Now the local office have challenged me to a, uh, to a game. When I say uh, they took it seriously, they've just watered the course. So uh, I have a feeling I'm about to get hustled here. After winning our match, it was back to the hotel for a quick shower, and then... And just like that, I find myself back at the airport, about to jump on a Vietnam Airlines A320 for a quick one hour flight from uh, here through to Hanoi, uh, the last stop on this whirlwind trip through uh, Indochina. Let's go. Okay, let's fly. And after this one, only three more flights until I get home. So really four, including this one. We arrived in Hanoi, thank you very much. Yeah. Lovely, thank you, bye bye. Normally they don't turn on the light. No? Uh, today I asked them to turn on the light to welcome you. Thank you very much. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and the good thing is that works with every single group. So it's nine o'clock at night and I've just arrived at my hotel in uh, Hanoi. Definitely not in Luang Prabang anymore. It's a big city out there. Uh, let's quickly go and get a bite to eat because exactly 12 hours from now, I start the training session uh, at the hotel here. It's another busy day. A uh, nice bowl of beef pho out on the street, just what I felt like. When picking these places, you've got to uh, pick places where there's uh, a few locals eating as well, so there's a bit of fast food turnover. This is uh, delicious. Good morning. It's the last full day of the trip. One more training session today. Uh, some work this afternoon. And then tomorrow I can start my journey home. It's been a long one. 
Oh, it's been a busy one, not necessarily a long trip. This is a relatively short trip. Uh, but it's been a uh, been a busy one. So today we do uh, Hanoi. First little bit of housekeeping. Got to make sure I look crease three. Got to make sure I look crease free for this uh, for this session today. Last training session of the trip. Let's go. Let's do it. That's it, work's done. Now uh, time to explore a bit of Hanoi. First things first though, a bit of caffeine. Good. There's a real secret to crossing the street in uh, Hanoi, in Vietnam. Basically, uh, you wait for a gap, and then you just walk. You maintain the same speed, and you don't deviate. And what you find is the traffic moves around you. The important thing to remember is not to make any sudden movements, suddenly stop or suddenly speed up. Keep that same constant speed and the traffic will move around, around you. That way you can cross even the busiest of roads here. Right in the heart of Hanoi, next to the hustle and bustle of the old quarter, is uh, Huan Kim Lake. It's a tranquil oasis, especially this uh, temple, which is on a little island in the lake. It's as good a place as any to, uh, to end this video. From here, I'm gonna wander back to the hotel, do some work, check some emails, and tomorrow morning, I uh, transfer to the airport and then start my journey home. It's been a really, really busy week, but an incredible week, and very rewarding as well. Thanks for joining me and for indulging me in this uh, video vlog. Do let me know if um, you'd like more of these, because obviously I, uh, I do travel a bit, and it's nice to give you a, a glimpse and an insight as to, uh, to what I actually do. Um, so yeah, let me know if you'd like any more. In the meantime, look, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't done so, please check out my channel, where uh, you'll find a whole lot of flight reviews and a few travel videos as well. Um, if you haven't done so, yes, please do subscribe, and in the meantime, as always, happy travels.